Welcome everyone. It is the 16th of September, 2020. Hope everybody is staying healthy and doing fine. This is the way it is naturally. And we are about to start in on a brand new series. Um, we're going to start off with back. I'm going to be going through body parts and we're going to define each body part. And we're going to talk about specifically, you know, which exercises target that particular body part. And I'm going to give you my take on uh, what I think are the optimal ones to use. Uh, with that said, uh, we'll be right back in a moment as soon as we get to uh, take care of first things first. And I should have had that queued up. But we'll be Welcome back. Welcome back. Hope everybody had a good day. It is Wednesday, halfway through hump day, as they call it. And uh, yeah, I'm looking really, I'm really looking forward to this series. Uh, we are going to go through each and every body part. Um, some days it might take us a part one and part two, uh, be, you know, for at least some of the bigger body parts. And depending on how many exercises I want to go over with you. Um, but the only thing I'm a little bit disappointed in is I actually want to do, be doing my own demonstration on these exercises, but uh, so far I haven't been able to line that up, but I do have, uh, I have a program that I use with all my clients, and there are video demos that I will uh, take you through, and uh, I have cut out the, uh, the voice, and I'll be doing my own commentating, I'll explain things, that, particularly if some of these exercises aren't done 100% the way I would do them. Uh, most of them are pretty close. Uh, but with that said, we're going to start off. I'm going to have to set up my screen here. And I want to see just a couple of things here. Um, yeah, what do I want to see here? If you don't mind, I'm going to take that off. I think we're okay. And I want to see um, what... Uh, what I actually, everything, I want to make sure I get the right screen for you people. Okay. So I want to make sure that uh, everything is looking fine. When I choose the size for the screen here, when I do these demos, uh, I'd like to be able to have myself on screen at the same time. But if, uh, okay, so that's okay like that. Um, let's just go back this way. Just, I want to compare the differences. If they bear with me here for a second, how is that? And then I'll go over to uh, this. No, that's not where. Here we are here. Yeah, there we are. Okay. So I think, you know, I'll just kind of play around with it a bit. All right. So we're going to start off. So we're talking about basically, you know, the entire back here. So we're going to talk about your lower back. I'm not going to get into technical names because I don't really think that there's a, a need for that. Um, but, you know, we have your lower back. You know, we have to deal with our lats, right? And then we have to deal with our middle back which is not necessarily, uh, you know, a separate area that we target on its own, but there are some specific exercises that are a little bit more exacting on that. And we got the trapezius area here as well. So I'm going to start off with lower back, I do believe. And we're going to go here, and I'm just going to make sure. I want to make sure that I'm not – oh, 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 hold on here. Yeah, yeah I got to cut that out. I think we're okay there now. All right. So anyways, let me just flip back here. And so we're going to talk about the lower back. Uh, lower back, a lot of people end up with lower back problems. And um, many of the problems that people encounter actually don't even have anything to do with their training. Uh, people throw out their lower back, you know, vacuuming the rug. I mean, really, it's that, it can be that temperamental. And as you get a little older, it becomes more temperamental. thing to keep in mind is when you're doing lower back exercises, and I'm going to explain the you know top couple and show them to you. Uh, you have to be very wary that you're actually using you know using your legs. Uh, you know you're not you know completely bent over in vulnerable position because if you do that, 
I guarantee you sooner or later, you're going to blow your lower back out. And once you do that, especially the older you get, the harder it is to recuperate from that. Okay. So let's, let's just move on. And I'm going to bring up that screen again. Yeah, okay, I'm inside here. I am going to go over to the actual screen itself. And I am going to take this one. Uh, actually, I'm going to remove this one. And I'm going to uh, delete that. And I'm going to bring in a second screen, which is going to be a little bit more appropriate where we go through the actual exercises here. Okay, there we are. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to bring up. Here's a basic exercise that we can start with here, okay? And I just want to make sure that uh, before we go too much further, I'm going to put a, a pause on that and just say a couple more things here. Okay, so we're going to talk about hyperextensions here. Hyperextensions are a good way to start. I don't necessarily, uh, some people will do hyperextensions and actually use weighted plates or even cables. Uh, I believe hyperextensions are more like a warm up for your lower back. Um, I wouldn't advise personally about again, uh, of using uh, discs, but you can, but you have to be very careful. And always make sure that when you're on the uh, hyperextension bench, I'm going to flip over that screen myself here, that, you know, make sure that you're in the correct support position here when you're doing hyperextensions. You don't want to have this part of the thing down too low, but you don't want to, if you have it up too high, you're not getting enough flexion here, okay? But if you have it down too low, then you're actually, you know, you're going to put too much stress actually on your hamstrings and even your knees. So, you know, just, you know, right around your hips or a tiny bit below, and that's where you want to be, okay? So I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to make commentary as I'm going through this exercise. The gentleman's talking, but I have that blocked out. So anyways, you're just going to watch, and I'll explain if there's anything I see that I don't, I don't think is proper, okay? So make sure you're lined up. You know, always under control, okay? Your hands don't necessarily have to be folded, but that is a good way. So if you look at what he's doing there, he doesn't have that bench low enough. He's actually partway up his lower abdominals. And to me, uh, that's a safer way to go, but you're also not getting enough work on the lower on the lower rectors, not, not in my opinion. I would be dropping that stand just a little bit more, okay? But, you know, he's got the control part, and you want to put a minor hold, you know, at the top of the movement, okay? And in this type of movement, like I said, it's really a warm-up. And I prefer in that 12 to 15 rep range, which is, the, which is odd for me because I don't believe in high repetitions like that. But because I treat it more uh, like it is actually a warm-up rather than anything else, I believe that, you know, that's the way to go. So, you know, and let's just move on to the next movement, which I think is also, you know, one of the best movements for, uh, for doing your uh, lower back. And actually, it benefits your, your whole back in particular, but we're going to just put a stop on that. Okay, let's just put stop here. Okay, so barbell deadlifts. I mean, deadlifts can be done in numerous styles. You'll see them done uh, very stiff-legged, which is more hamstring. You'll see them done sumo style. You know, those are things that are fine if, if they're for other purposes. But for building actual, you know, back thickness and lower back strength and lower back development, the normal foot spacing you know, shoulder width, basically, you know, head up, you know, hips down, you know, driving with your legs. And uh, that's the normal position for a, for a good deadlift in order to develop uh, both strength and, uh, and back thickness. So we're going to watch and I'm going to put a pause on if I see anything that's not going correctly here with this guy. So you notice he steps up and the bar should be as close as possible to your knees. You should be looking straight ahead, okay? Uh, I personally prefer an alternate grip, which means one facing forward, one facing back. That way the bar doesn't roll in your hands, okay? And pull up as he does. I don't believe he's down low enough. Like when I'm looking at his movement, uh, we're going to back it up just a hair. I think I can back that up. Yeah, okay. Just back it up. I want to see where he's at. Okay, so you'll see where he's at there. I believe he should be a little bit lower. You want to be driving with your legs and not curling your back. But, you know, he's keeping his back flat. But if you're a little bit lower and, and drive from the bottom, you'd be in, in a better place. Okay. So let's, let's watch him continue the movement. Okay. He's dropping his eyes. And you should be visually looking directly ahead of you. And that's very important. I know it doesn't sound important, but it is. 
when you so when you start to drop your eyesight, when you drop your line of vision like that, you tend to start curling your back. I mean, he's working with a very light weight and he's paying attention because he wants to, you know, he wants to demonstrate a, the best form possible. But if he was looking down like he was doing and he was in the midst of a heavy set, the tendency would be at that point to round out your back. And that's what you want to avoid. So we're just going to let him continue the movement. Okay. Or maybe he's just going to discuss it at this point. But yeah, I think he's just going to discuss it at this point. So we're going to take that off the screen. We'll get out of this one. Okay. All righty. So we're going to go back and me on full screen. Okay. So lower back. I don't believe there's a better exercise than the deadlift. And the deadlift also, you've got to keep in mind, when you're doing deadlifting, you're not necessarily just working your lower back. Your deadlifting, excuse me, is even going to take in your traps. And it's going to take in your mid-back. But it's definitely a great a great strengthener for the lower back. And it's a, you know one of the standard powerlifting movements. If you can build up good strength in your, in your uh, deadlift, there's a good chance you're going to benefit from it in other exercises, like your bent over rowing uh, as well, like your... Um, just hold on a second. Hauser, just wait. That's enough. Get in there. Get in there. Hold on. Sorry, folks. Get in there now. Sorry. I'm just going to mute the microphone here. Uh, I have to. I have to. So. Yeah, I apologize for that, but I just about had my American Bulldog uh, taking, a, taking one of my lives away from my cat, so I had to stop everything. <laughs> my apologies, but he's put away now. So anyways, let's get back to the deadlift. So a deadlift is going to be your, your primary exercise. You can also do, some people will do, you know, they don't want to take it right from the floor. So you can put yourself in a power rack and, you know, so avoid that lower portion and still get some of the benefits, you know. So have yourself in a partially raised position and then finish off your deadlift movement. Okay, I am going to, let's see, what are we gonna tackle next? I think we're gonna tackle the, uh, basically your, your mid portion. And I'm gonna go over some of these exercises here. Um, here's some, uh, definitely a, a big exercise, exercise that I love. I'm not sure how he'll demonstrate it here. It's called the uh, dumbbell uh, single arm bent over row. Uh, I'm gonna watch his form here in a minute. And we're just going to see how he completes this. Okay, so we'll watch. This will basically affect you know both your lats and your center back. You know how he's positioning himself is fine. I actually position myself with hands on dumbbells on a dumbbell rack rather than putting my knee up. I don't think you actually need to have the knee up. Okay. Okay. So when I watch him do this movement. Uh, I don't have a problem with his body, but I, I think in order to get the maximum benefit of a dumbbell row, you should allow yourself a mild twist to the body when you're dropping it down in order to get a, a full stretch on that lat and then pull the whole thing back. And I would be pulling, rather than up here, I would be pulling to back here, which I do believe he's pulling a little bit high on that. Yes, he is. So I believe the, you know, the tendency is to pull high, but you want to be actually pulling you know, back to this portion here, okay? Once again, you know, keeping your focus and what you don't want your head bobbling all over the place. You want to have yourself well supported. Uh, I'm not a big believer of a knee on a bench, but many people are. It doesn't matter. It's not really going to affect you one way or another. You know, you just want to put the focus in on your, on your, on your lat and your center back. Get a complete contraction at the top, okay? A good squeeze, and then, and then under control, take it down. Okay, we'll just let him finish up here. Okay. Always under control. Remember, just a little bit lower than he is, but his, his tempo is fine. Okay. All right, so dumbbell rows taken care of. Okay, now we can go into some, um, let's go into a, this is, I'm going to show you two different styles of barbell bent over rows. Okay. This is the old style, which many people have been doing for years. 
Okay. Uh, it, it works fine, but it tends to put yourself in a quite a vulnerable position. You have to understand when you're lining yourself up here and you'll watch what he's going to do here, he's going to have himself in pretty much a 90 degree angle perpendicular uh, or horizontal to the ground. Okay. So having his body in a perpendicular, his upper body perpendicular to his legs. That's a very vulnerable position. You know, you definitely want to be making sure you're wearing a weight belt if this is your preferred way to do it. Okay. Like it, if you notice, he's doing the right thing. He's got his head focused, looking straight ahead. Okay. And he's pulling up to his, to, you know, as close to into just under his rib cage, which is fine. You know, so why that doesn't stop when I do that. So his form is good. Uh, could have a little bit more control. Okay, but his form is good. His positioning is correct for this exercise. Okay, I am going to show you my preferred version of this exercise. Okay, uh, many people, especially if you're, you know, you're well versed in, in heavy duty bodybuilding, if you follow anything in regards to that style, uh, Dorian Yates basically brought this to light for a lot of people. And there are machines that actually replicate that. It's actually, there is machines actually called uh, a Yates row. Okay. So what it is here is your, when you set up your barbell row, okay, they call it a barbell standing row, but it's not. You're actually almost on a 45 degree angle to the floor. And it's best if you can to do this with a reverse grip, okay? You'll get more benefit out of it. And when you do it, you have to be, you know, okay, I'm gonna just let it play here for a second. I'm gonna see how he demonstrates it and make my commentary as he goes along, okay? Once again, you know, staying close to your bar, you know, always know, don't be reaching for things, especially with heavy weights. He is doing a reverse grip. He's doing wider grip than what you need, okay? Okay, where he's pulling to is fine. His angle to the ground is good. And if you notice, he's using a reverse grip, okay? And I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is what is called an open grip or a thumbless, gri thumbless grip. And with many exercises, and when we get into lat pull-ins and that, I'm going to tell you that this is the preferred grip. And I'll explain to you more when we get into lat pull-downs why I say that, okay? So just watch him a bit more, okay? So keep in mind, so you notice one thing here. When he drops that weight down, he's not lowering his body anymore. Like he doesn't drop the angle. And that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to maintain that angle and then just let it, you know, so let it stretch out and then pull it back up, you know, so you don't want to have that big, you know, fluctuation in your, in your upper body to your lower body with this movement. You want to keep that 45 and focus on that center, uh, center and mid back. That's what you want to do. Okay. I'll let them finish off this movement. Okay. So this is what's called a, a, it's actually called a Yates row. They call it a standing barbell curl. So the only difference between the, uh, I'm gonna bring myself back on screen here. Yeah, yeah, boy, I didn't even have you. I didn't even, I did have you on there, okay, but I may not, I may have missed the demonstration. Hmm, I think I did miss the demonstration, <laughs> so I'm gonna bring it back up once more. Yes, that was a real bonehead move on my part. Okay, let's go to the uh, standing barbell row. This one is so you can see what I was talking about in case I didn't have it on the screen. Okay, you move it ahead a little bit. Okay, so let's start here. Okay, so what you have is your you know, reverse grip. He's a little wide, okay? You have your body almost in a 45 degree angle to the ground. And you're pulling into basically the bottom of your uh, bottom of your midsection. Okay, um, you want to keep your head. You know, he was looking nice and straight ahead, but you know he's starting to drop his view. You want to keep your view straight ahead again. Uh, but overall, you know, he's got good form. Uh, his grip is a little wide, and as I was mentioning to people here, this reverse grip is what you want to do. But his hand spacing is just a little wider than you need to do. This, okay. All right. I do apologize for that. I uh, I didn't realize that I hadn't even you know put uh, put myself on screen or hadn't even put the exercise on screen. Okay, so 
we are going to that is tackle the um, some of the mid back. Uh, we're already at 20 minutes here. I'm going to tackle one more, uh, another uh, two more rolling styles. Okay, we're going to do a seated row. Okay, so I'm going to bring back on uh, on the screen here. I'm going to bring. I'm going to use this screen here. There we go. Okay, and we're going to start into some uh, some pull downs. Okay, this is a lat uh, lat pull downs with a wide grip. Okay, there's a couple things I want you to pay attention to. Okay, so wait till he gets into his movement. Okay, some machines. I'm not sure how this one will be here. Many machines are poorly designed here. And if you notice, if you see where that bar is, that bar is actually almost a foot ahead of where his body is. That's a very poor design for a lat pull down machine. Very poor design, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna stop it temporarily. When you're doing this movement, you want, you want if you can, to be in a machine that has your spine vertically under here, this part is correct. You want to have your body in a somewhat hyperextended position. You want to have a curvature to your back. You want to keep your chest high, and you want to be pulling to the clavicle. Not down here, but these machines, because they're so poorly designed, they have you pulling down here. I see people doing it all the time. The other thing is he's using a closed grip, so he has his hands rip, gripped right around the bar. That's not the best way. You got to understand, when you're doing lat pulldowns in particular, uh, your weak link is your bicep. And by doing a closed grip, you tend to fatigue the biceps a lot before your back because your back is so much more complicated and a bigger muscle group than your bicep, okay? So one way to circumvent that is if you don't have the ability to do pre-exhaust with a, with a Nautilus back machine, which is the ideal way to go, uh, you would use a, a open grip or a thumbless grip. Thumbless grips are great for a lot of different exercises, but for this one in particular. And why is that? Because when you use a thumbless grip, okay, that forces you to basically use your hands like they were just hooks. So you're taking, you know, the forearm, the bicep out to a certain degree, and all you're focusing in on is using your hand as hooks and pulling it down and back, which is what the lats do. They pull your arms down and back, okay? And the more you keep your chest high, the more emphasis, the more curvature you put in here, within reason, you don't need to be bending over backwards. And as long as you're far enough under the machine, you're going to direct the, the stress to where it's supposed to be, okay? Which is basically the upper and outer lats, okay? Anyways, we'll let him continue with that movement. You see where he's pulling to? That's, that's definitely not, okay? I'm going to just back that up a hair. I wish this thing moved a little bit quicker, a little slower. But anyways, let's do this. He is, if you notice, I'm going to bring it down a little further. There you go. Okay. He's almost down mid-chest. You want that bar coming in just under your chin. And there's a big difference between four or five inches. There really is. Okay. Part of it is because of where this machine is lining up. He doesn't have the benefit of having a really nice made machine. Cybex is nice machines, but they're, like many different brands are out in the other days, they're, they're more interested in making pretty looking machines rather than functional machines. Cybex is not my uh, not a big choice for me. Uh, a lot of minor companies make uh, far better equipment, not nearly as fancy, but just as sturdy and very nice to look at and much more uh, mechanically designed, okay? So let's um, finish the movement, okay? I wanna see good control, which he's doing, okay? But use your open grip or thumbless grip and pull up, see where he is? He's, in, he's, in, he's in, even going lower and lower, like to his sternum. You don't want to be doing that, okay? Uh, see where we're at here for time-wise. Uh, we might have to be doing a, a and B part on here. I read 24 minutes already, and we haven't even got to the traps yet. I want to go through some more exercises, okay? So I'm going to do one more. We're going to do another version of uh, for back work, and it's also going to be a pull-down. But what we're going to do here is we're going to do uh, I, well, we can do it as a, a pull-up, and we can do it as a, as a pull-down, but we're going to do a, uh, let's see, do we have it on here? Full script pull-up. I do believe we have it here. See what he's got. Oh, over the head. Okay. 
he's going to do it actually not on a lap machine. He is going to do it actually on a, on a chinning bar, which is fine, which is probably something good we discuss here, okay? This exercise here is, let me just stop that for a second, is a great movement. And you, you notice that he's not super wide with his grip. And you also notice that he's thumbless on here, which is a good thing. But what you're not noticing, or what he's not doing, I'll just bring it in here once again. Okay. He's not pulling up. Um, he's not forcing his elbows back. Look where his elbows are. They're almost going straight down. When you're doing this movement, if you keep your chest high and you pull down and back with your elbows, you'll put more of the emphasis on here, which is what you want to do. Okay? I prefer people, most people don't have enough strength unless you have a machine there where they do it's assisted or you can add weight to take some of the weight as a counterbalance system. Well, what you can do is you can take a lat pull down and use a triangle bar, okay? Basically use a triangle. Uh, I can bring myself up on screen so I can explain a little bit more about what I mean. Uh, so, you know, your, your triangle bar is like such. Okay, it's basically just like a V, and you're pulling down to your chest, or to your upper chest right here. So all the way to the top and down with the elbows, down and back, okay? That is a far superior movement to, uh, to what he is doing here, uh, but it's still uh, the same general idea. I'm going to let him continue on with the movement if he's not finished already. No, he's basically finished. Okay, so pull-ups or pull downs, it doesn't matter, either one. If you're strong enough, if you are strong enough to do an actual pull up, that's fine, those are great, because I think basic exercise, and let's face it, if you're in a place that doesn't have a lot of fancy equipment, you may be forced to do basic movements, you know? Maybe you only got a few barbells and dumbbells, you don't have any machines at all, you can still build a great physique with that, but you have to, you know, you have to make use of what you have, so, in the, I'm, I'm assuming when I'm doing most of these demonstrations that where you're at, you have a full line of equipment. So if people are making, you know, uh, make comments and they tell me, you know, they you know, they want to see, um, you know, something else because, you know, their gym doesn't have that, you know, I can pull up something else for you and we can discuss it from there. Or you can contact me personally and we can go through it that way. Okay. So we're at 27 minutes. So we're going to get into a second part there because there's a couple more. I want to get into some cable rows. I want to get into some trapezius work, okay? So we're going to have a second part to back day. So like I said, the only my only um, part that I'm not happy about today is the fact that I'm not able to do the exercise demonstrations myself, which is the way I want to actually do this series. But that still might be coming. I'll see what I can work out by the end of this week, okay? Um, anybody that has any questions in regards to their training, their diet, uh, you know, please get a hold of me at bullfiercetraining.com or you can get a hold of me at Bullfierce Training on, on Facebook as well. Ask me questions there. We can set up. I, we, you know, I have very affordable programs. I have four decades worth of experience. You know, uh, you're definitely getting a, a top of the line uh, trainer, uh, extremely well versed in diet. I have a strong history in bodybuilding competition, so I know how to people how to get people into contest condition, or just get yourself ripped if that's what you want to do for you know to just look good. Either way, a um, little bit more of an update as well. Uh, those of you who may not caught my last announcement, I decided that I am going to get back on stage here. So May 29th here in Edmonton, uh, I forget it's in the WNBF, which is the World Natural Bodybuilding Federation which sadly doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot. I mean, they do do testing, but sadly a lot of the people that compete in those shows are not naturals. But, you know, I accept that fact, and that's fine. I am 60 years old, but I'm going in the open class, and uh, I may actually go into a couple of classes. Uh, right now I'm standing in at 213 pounds at 5'9", and I'm in very good body fat condition, um, doing my, getting myself into kind of a semi uh, semi-contest condition uh, over the course of the rest of September and October. And then I'm going to start my prep uh, by, you know, looking for size and strength again. What was the course of the next, because that will leave me with seven months for the show. So I generally uh, be in that shape. I did a blog actually recently talking about, you know, contest prep 
I believe that, you know, you should have yourself within about 15 pounds of contest condition. I'll definitely be there. Uh, I don't know what my show weight will be because uh, that's not how I approach it. Um, anyways, what I'm going to be doing is a regular updates, uh, both picture wise and, and, and informing you. I'll also be posting a lot of it. I'd love for you to come along for that journey and you know, should find it inspiring and maybe you'll want to get yourself ready for a show as well. I do contest prep packages. I do uh, anything concerning fitness and bodybuilding. Uh, I have four decades worth of experience and I can get anybody ready for a show or just get ready to look good in that dress or that suit or whatever it is that you wear. Anyways, my name is Perry Larrabee. This is Bullfear's uh, Bull training story and this is the way it is naturally. I'm glad you stopped by. I hope you come by again. And I am going to sign off with that. And we are going to come back with the second part of Back, I do believe, on Friday then. Take care and God bless. Mm -hmm.